All right, well, welcome to Diamond Dialogue, the chat room interview show. On uh, today's episode, we have a host for Cosmic Radio TV, known as Vincent404 in the chat room. Join me in welcoming Roberto Viegas. How you doing, man? Hello, everybody. How's it going, Alex? <laughs> it's doing doing pretty good. It's good to see you on uh, on a different show. I always always catch your uh, your uh, oh, uh, movie draft minutes and stuff at the end of Night Attack, and I uh, listen to cinematography and everything. So uh, you guys are you guys are doing pretty good. Yeah, doing a lot of work and stuff, but yeah, it was funny because I remember you had asked me, I saw like Diamond Dialogue like, as it kicked off when uh, when Brant went on, and uh, I was like, oh, cool, well, maybe one day I'll be on that show, maybe <laughs> one day I'll be invited to, to, to be part of the dialogue and such, and then you, you messaged me like, hey, do you want to be on? I'm like, yeah, of course, uh, of course. <laughs> you know, why, why wouldn't I want to be on? Hmm. Yeah, it's just, it's fun to get to know everybody that you, you know, see in the chat room all the, all the time, so... Uh, it looks like totally. the internet's getting a little better and was being dumb for a minute there, but yeah, happens. welcome to the fact I'm on my iPad and and hopefully everything will 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 turn out. It, it, like uh, the Wi-Fi in my apartment is weird to the point that one of my Wi-Fi points is in my bedroom to make it easier for the iPad, and that might be what's hooking up to, but it should mm -hmm. be fine. Uh, if it if it gets any more problematic, I'll, I'll let me know. I'll I'll log out, switch points, and come back in. Nah, you're so you yeah. should be fine so far. I was fine the whole time before before we started the show. So it's just a little hiccup. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you know, we'll get we'll get started with the questions right away. Uh, what's the origins of your chat handle of Vincent four hundred four? Oh, I'd love to say that it was inspired by uh, Vincent Valentin, one of my favorite uh, characters in Final Fantasy VII. I would honestly love to say that it's an uh, inspiration from Vincent Vega, of course, uh, played by John Travolta in Pulp Fiction. In all honesty, I was either in high school or middle school. I needed a new chat handle, and that's the first thing that popped in my head. I'm not even, like, kidding. Oh, There's, really? Like, no... Like that, like that, like the secret origin story is that there's no origin story. It's just like <laughs> I was sleeping. I I had at one point had a chat handle like tied specifically to some like Star Trek role playing thing. It tells you what I did in elementary school for Lord's sakes and I, an aim. Uh, and I was like, I need a new chat handle. Vincent four zero four. All right, cool. And That's I looked. Me. Oh, it's free. Awesome. Didn't even think about any repercussions. Anything. I'm like, surely, uh, you know, years will go on, and I'll switch this handle. And then never got switched. Yeah, right. Never switched. At least it's easy to say and understand. You know, people generally don't spell it wrong when you just, you know, say, yeah, hey, Vincent it's, it's 404. Such a know? weird. Like, I'm like I've, I've had it for years to the point where it's like, I, I still have like the aim. Like, like out of all the things, I think I'm proud of is that I have a low. I had a low ICQ number. And, and Vincent Forster for name. Nice. <laughs> yeah, that, that low ICQ number, man. That's that's a real nerd <laughs> card. <laughs> oh yeah, that, that, that's that's where the gold's at. Right. That, that... Well, we know you're you're into technology, obviously, by your your low ICQ number. <laughs> um, <laughs> but what what's your favorite non tech activity if you ever go to that unknown place of outside? My non tech activity is still geeky. Um, but it actually is either very either board games or tabletop gaming in general. I, oh, I love right. me some some D and love me some RPG dice rolling action. I love me some card games. I've I've uh, I've on and off since about fourth grade uh, played Magic the Gathering, um, and so oh, right. I'm always a big. I, there's always a little ancillary version of me that goes. You know, to the uh, comic book store, or whatever store I'm at, and I see, you know, the new magic cards. I'm like, do I hop in? Do I not hop in? How right. much is it for a draft? Fifteen? Oh, here's fifteen, and then then it's, it's all over from there. Yeah, like right. it's, I, I'm I'm but one draft away always from getting back into magic. Uh, to the point when, during South by Southwest, I was going to a kind of a hidden concert for Jonathan Colton, not Jonathan Colton, um, MC Front a lot, and hmm. I actually played magic with like his guitar his bass guitarist because he was there early. That's and then he had a whole bunch of decks and stuff was funny. Yeah, I yeah, uh, I used to play magic for a long time and then I kinda just stopped playing it for a while, so I sold my cards and I actually found a deck not too long ago that I just had you know, in a box somewhere as an old deck. I still have every single one of my cards pretty much in the in my back closet here in my apartment. Oh, I'm I am like now. one. I am one draft away from getting into magic. If someone were to say, "Here's fifteen dollars, come with me to a draft," like it's over. It's all over. Yeah. No, I'm. I'm. Uh, I, I'm. I'm. You know, kicking myself now for it too, because I had a bunch of good cards in there and, and a lot of fun ones too. I, I liked the uh, unglued sets. Um, I'm, yep. I'm not even sure. Do they still make those even? 
The they made a second version of it called oh, okay. Unhinged that I have the entire set of that I, I I dedicated my time and money and effort to get the entire set of Unhinged. Uh, <laughs> one because it's it's such a funny set, but two it has my uh, it has one of my favorite hidden cards in there. It's a foil uh this it's a foil card called Super Secret Tech, and it's all foil cards cost one less mana to play or something like oh, that. Oh, nice. <laughs> it's that's so silly. It's right. such a silly card. I'm like, I have to get this set. It's, it's such a funny thing. I, I, you bring up Unglued. Unglued's such a fun set with uh, Knights of the Hokey Pokey and, um, uh, of course, the uh, the big freaking monster, or oh, the yep. BFM. I had uh, two and a half full uh, full sets of, of BFMs. Oh wow! That's what that, that's what I'm saying. I'm pissed. I sold my cards. I had, I had a lot of fun stuff. <laughs> Unglid was such a. I mean, I, I had to convince my friends to to draft unhinged. Yeah. Like like because like my friends like I had a my friend Kyle who's a I've had the show many times. I know we're we're now getting into a complete ti- you know the uh, <laughs> tangent here, but like I I had, had to convince him because he was in like the pro circuit. He was getting into like the pro scene of things like that. I had to like hardcore convinced let's, let's play freaking unhinged please let's play unhinged let's do this at least once in our life because he just he just didn't get it because it was useless cards it was stuff so it was essentially my birthday that we ended up doing it because it was like okay fine we'll do it on your birthday we'll play one thing like, yes thank god and it was so much fun it was so broken so silly and and, oh, and yeah. i you know it was so hilarious and I, I love it every minute of it well and that's why i'm glad that uh that, that there's hearthstone now because it gives mm-hmm. me a way to play a similar style game to get that same feeling. But, man, I don't got to carry around cards. I don't, I don't have to keep track of crap. It, it, it only goes so far, Hearthstone. Yeah, it's and not, it's not really the same is, game. It, it, it's not even the same. It's just like, because at one point I played a lot of Magic the Gathering online. Mm. Uh, and there was some, like, like I forgot what the what the card was on it. But you had this uh and, and online, you could actually do things. They realized, oh, shoot, we can do things we can't do in the physical game space. Right. And they had this, like, avatar card that uh, had an ability, if you play with the ability, that uh, tap, uh, you know, any amount of mana and cast a random creature card from any set, you know, available in Magic the Gathering online and put oh, it into really? play. That's interesting. And, and so there's this... this own like sub game type that they evolved out of that, that then became an official game type to the point where like it was just this like random draw of like all right i got my six drop what's gonna happen <laughs> oh damn leviathan like it, it would be these this crazy stuff would come out and we would never you'd never quite know what was gonna happen next and it was just so so much fun of like you know just you know every turn tapping a mana and seeing what came out of the out of the pool oh, or, yeah. you know cards that was so much fun it was so silly no i actually i actually enjoy cards kind of like that because that's why i use uh in my hunter deck i use the uh the summon the beast one it's a, the three mana summon a a, a beast champion um because it's, yeah. it, it's only like three or four that it chooses from but it's still really nice you know to, to... oh yeah no it's, it's so much it was such a fun thing yeah it's, it's... all right i'm I've completely derailed the show for a <laughs> That's all right. It's, it's, it's fun talking about that stuff. So. Um, well, all right. We'll, we'll move on to, to more questions then. Um, you're, you're a Twitter person. You live your life in 140 characters at a time, right? <laughs> I think so. Or something like that. What's, what's your favorite Twitter account you follow? You, you know, maybe not the, the funniest one or something, but just the, best, the one you enjoy the most. The one I enjoy the most, God, that's going to be hard. I would <laughs> probably have to say, um, let me think. Out of all the Twitter accounts I follow the most, um, probably Anthony Carboni. Um, Ooh. <laughs> well, well, and this is a weird reason why I, I like his the most. Um, uh, and, and only because, again, because I, I follow so many accounts. Like I think of like, well, no, I like following all those two guys, and I love following that, but I'm like, they, they, you know, the ones I, I look forward to tweeting, they'll tweet every so often. But yeah, I guess it had to be Anthony Carboni just because A, I usually will check out his stuff, and B, he's one of the few people out there that has a, um, a Earthbound inspired header still. Uh, oh, I'd be yeah. either him or any of the other, like Mato or something like that, if I had to think. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, no, I actually, I enjoy Anthony Carboni's feed. Um, you know, we all oh, make yeah. fun of him because Subgun's made that awesome shirt. But. <laughs> but... <laughs> Um, well, I mean, I love I love Carboni just because like Bite Jacker was one of the things that like I I, I wish could come back yeah. out of all the things that have died. I wish 
Spite Jacker could come back because that's what like got me into getting into indie games. Like oh, that's sure. what got me into like all the indie game kind of following that scene. Uh, and and I want I, I so want that to come back. Yeah, well, and I really enjoy uh, uh, his and um... oh my god, I'm blanking on his name. We have concerns. Um... Uh, Jeff Kanata. Jeff Kanata, thank you. Oh my god. <laughs> oh yeah. Sure. Yeah, no, that that's a hilarious show. Uh, I, I enjoy listening to that all, all the time. <laughs> but all right, so here's the more interesting question the the one that really gets to the core of who you are or something. <laughs> um, who is your daddy and what does he do? No, no, that's that's yeah, no, I don't need to know that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm just I'm just expecting like like that, that this is a complete utter like. Uh, a hard just, hitting, just, you know, journalism. misdirection, and you're just gonna ask me this, like the the typical, not even the typical, but just like like this, like some random question out of some soundboard. So, how did your mom abuse you? No. <laughs> well, no, I'm like I can't no. even say that. My mother's awesome. I know. I'm just kidding. No, uh, if you were given a superpower, or if you gained a superpower somehow, what might that superpower be, and and what's the first thing you would do with it? Teleportation. Teleport to someplace else at That's any given one. time. Now, now, are we talking uh, nightcrawler teleportation? No, long distance teleportation. Oh, okay. if, I choose, if I choose to one day go and say, you know what, I want to be in Japan. Boom, done. You know what, I want to go home and say hi to my parents. Boom, done. So you're talking I, more I want, hero from heroes. Yes, like I, I want long, long distance teleportation at any given time to anywhere I'd like. Yeah. Anywhere on the planet. That's yeah. That well, I mean, or not the planet, I suppose. But that's, not, well, well, that's got its own yeah, challenges. I would, <laughs> I would say, I would say, typically, at least what if we need to limit it, at least whatever terrestrial body I'm on. Yeah, that's pretty um, true. But I don't have to have been there. I don't have to have been there previously to visit it. Like, oh, I right. like I can go anywhere I want, even if I've never quite been there. Maybe if I see a picture of it, I have to kind of focus and think about it or something. Yeah, you got to figure out a place to land, but <laughs> right. But yes, teleportation, and yes. <laughs> No, that's awesome. That's a fun one. That's one that I would find extremely useful. That's it's right up there with flying, you know. Uh, because that's the that's the thing. It's like when you when you talk about like flying versus teleportation. Like flying is like, oh, cool, look, I get the the, the sensation of flying through the air and winds blowing. Like, no, no, f that. No, I I I'm I don't want to I don't want to fuck around waiting around just to fly someplace. Like, nah, uh, uh-uh. uh. I'm just gonna go. You know what I want to go today? Uh, Vegas. Boom. There. Boom. I'm done. Hey, how's it going, uh, Mitsula? And we just kind of chill and eat, right. eat some awesome food, and then I teleport back to <laughs> Austin. Job. Right. No, See, I, there's I mean, so many advantages to teleportation. Right. No, flying would be helpful if you wanted to do something in the air all the time. Like, cause, which, which I don't. I, I right. just want to get to the place. Exactly. Because I, I I can't even stand flying in the plane at times. I just want to get there already. I just want it to be done. I. I the one one of the activities I hate the most is driving to places. I I I, I cannot stand driving. Oh I, yeah. I, like once self driving cars come, it'll be pretty much over and done with. I just I cannot <laughs> stand. I can't stand driving. Now, as a counterpoint uh, to that, I am taking a road trip this summer, but it's not. See, in that, because I agree with you on the most part, but in that aspect, yeah, it's a lot of driving, but the driving is part of the trip. Like we're, you know, well, if you have somebody with you, if, yes. if like you're not alone while driving, it's it's fine. I just I hate driving like multiple hours someplace because especially here in Texas, because a lot of the, the interstates don't really have anything interesting on them. And so you're spending just three hours staring, going straight and just like, I just want this to be done. <laughs> I'm, I'm just I'm, I'm, I'm done with this. I just want to be done. I just want to go. Just get me to the place there. I don't want to speak because I know there's cops around here. I just want to <laughs> get there. If I could teleport and go like, boom, home. Hey, how's it going, mom? And like, you know, it'd make my parents happy. My mother would get to see me more often. Everything would be great. I get to see friends of mine I haven't seen in a while. Just right. like, look, I could teleport. Who cares? Okay. You know, then, then I could totally help rescue people. It's like you could say, hey, look, the guy is here. We have some, some satellite pictures. If you get in there and teleport this guy with you, like, you know, have the ability to take someone with me. Like, right. boom, boom, done. You know, and I, hey, look, I rescued the guy. Yay. More it all of, works out. Oh, well, I don't know if I want to be spoilery. Um, um, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. They have that. Are you caught up on? No, it? no. Okay, but oh. some guy has that power where they do that. Mm, yeah, it's it's different, okay. but it, yeah. 
if you haven't I seen it, yet. every I assume pretty much that it's at a point now where Marvel and DC, where Marvel and DC have thought of every single power that ever oh, yeah, could exist at a given point in time. Yeah, saying that there's somebody that has a certain power on a show doesn't really give it away, yeah. <laughs> you know, unless you know, like, like yeah, it's who like, that person. I, is. I assume that somebody somewhere has that power. Right. Exactly. No, it's it's an interesting show. Keep watching it. <laughs> but, uh, um. Oh yeah, sorry, I lost my place on on which questions we were on. Um, no problem. I know, right? Ones <laughs> are having a good time talking. Yeah, um, totally. So here's here's another good one. Whoops, excuse me, microphone. Uh, the the other good one that I like to ask is, if you can move to any planet, real or fictional, which planet would that be, and uh, what would your house look like? Riza. Riza. You're the second person to say that. Wasn't didn't Big Jim also say that? Did he say Riza too? Let me shoot. Let me switch it up. Uh, I think I think I it was will, him. But... I will. Okay, if I guys switch it up, if I if I guys switch it up, then I'll say Bajor. Uh, fictional. Um, only because uh, out of all the fictional planets, uh, Bajor seems like the coolest. And, I imagine you um, mean post occupation. Yeah, post, <laughs> oh, of course, post occupation. No, we're not. We're not going to go during the Cardassian occupation. God damn it! Now I'm bringing in DS9. I know. Um, it's, it was but, worse hey, look, as it, I brought it, it up. It, this, it, <laughs> If I don't reference like every other bit of dork material I can think of, then it's not going to be it's not going to be me. Uh, but yeah, no, definitely Bajor. Uh, if I think about that, because it's not Riza, because Riza's like like uh, Riza, I think would get boring after a while. It's too. But it's Bajor, too nice, yeah. But Bajor has got history. It's got culture. Uh, you know, it's it's got uh, cute alien girls out there. The it, it's got religion and and weird weird spirituality stuff going on. Like it's got a lot of stuff. I mean, yeah. at one point, I mean, Cisco wanted to build his house there, so you know, if Cisco's a Bajor, I mean, I guess I could chill there for a bit. See, I'd I'd be more of like I I I wouldn't enjoy that necessarily the um the religious aspect so much, but I would actually like to live on DS nine and be able to go to Bajor, you know, kind of kind oh. of the other way. You know. Well, I mean, if if space stations are cool, if that's a, if space stations are, are it could cool, could be your house, right? Uh, <laughs> and, and and if and if only because if if, if they're valid, and I, I want to live in the most exciting Machiavellian time, I would live on Babylon Five. That is a show I have not yet watched. I've been meaning to. Oh, you, uh, but it's if you, you know. can get beyond <laughs> uh, all the really bad green screen, that, and that's part it, of what it, I. Yeah, <laughs> it, it, I'm not even. You can just get beyond it. It's so, and it's hard to because they'll do it pointlessly. Because oh. that was during the era of like everything had to be green screen. Like you know, we're talking about the era that brought forth uh, you know Command and Conquer, the first one, Tiberium. Mm. Uh, was it Sun? I think. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, Tiberium Sun was the first. One. Yeah. Um, it, you know, if you can just get beyond that, if you can get beyond it, it's such an amazing series and such an amazing show. But you, you have to get beyond. From what, this, I, like, from what I remember, screen. the costuming wasn't that, or not the costume, but the makeup work wasn't that great or magic. It was okay. It wasn't <laughs> terrible. Know? Really, really, there's a scene where where I, I forget what the 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 president of B five what is uh, what his name was uh, Sheridan, where it's like Sheridan is addressing like the promenade essentially because uh, a lot of what DS nine borrowed from they they borrowed from uh, <laughs> from uh, B five. Oh okay. Um, and and he's addressing like the promenade of sorts, and it's it's the the best worst shot in the entire show, because on one half of of, of the shot is the obvious set that looks real, that has all this kind of physical stuff that people are walking around and addressing, sure. and then it cuts to this like obvious green screen that's like that has these like nineties and eighties. It's so it's so jarring. It's like ridiculously jarring because you're just like. You should have just stayed with this, and and you realize like why, why DS Nine did what they did with as many sets as they could. Right, because <laughs> you have to make so, it look real, otherwise it just sucks. It, it was so, it, it's so jarring. It's so jarring. And, and then at times it was during the, the the era of where Fox was trying to figure out how to get all their sci-fi shows popular, so they had like Penn and Teller come on mysteriously oh, yeah. for no apparent reason whatsoever. Right. <laughs> But still, good show. I mean, still, still a show to watch. There's so many great things about that show, but you have to get beyond like the fact that it's like this is ninety, this is the nineties, uh, and it doesn't really get any better than this. Yeah, that's true. That is true. We we've been watching old shows like uh, like Third Rock from the Sun and stuff. You know, catch it up on just like stuff we haven't seen in a long time. And I keep keep having to remind myself, oh shit, that was the nineties, man. That was so terrible. 
Well, because like last night, uh, I got bored and started watching. Uh, they put CSI Las Vegas on uh, Hulu Plus, and mm. I got kind of bored. And I was watching the pilot just randomly, and, and the guy's like, uh, and this, this is this so so bad and, and so kind of dated at times. He goes, "Did you get NBA? Did you get the new uh, NFL 2K game for the Dreamcast? Yeah, totally." I'm like, "Oh, oh that's right. That's Sega so bad. had a system back then. <laughs> Sega had a Sega had a system that oh. that had games on it, and and, and a weird uh, memory card with this LCD screen on it. Even though there were some great games in the Dreamcast. Yeah. Um, sorry. It was a system that was." It, had the right ideas just executed poorly it just it just so it it uh i, I could go on and on about that i won't <laughs> well you're also the host of the uh movie draft minute that we catch at the yes. end of uh night attacks and uh cord killers is is <laughs> or do you t- no you don't put them at the end of do you put them at the end of cord killers? no just just night attack just is, is all, all all i get i don't i don't i don't get the the honor of of, of a tom decides to do the stuff for that um oh, okay. not in a bad way but just it's... like uh, yeah you got you to poke Tom when you guys are doing the the summer one. You got to put him so, on there. Oh. Eh, I'll let I let them decide their, their thing. Not because I, I mean, I'd love to play. Don't get me wrong. I'd love to play the draft one year. Um, but yeah. I, I leave it to I leave it to, to team Brushwood and team, uh, jury to decide whether or not. Because uh, again, now then then there's that weird part of me that says that does that mean me doing the the minute means a conflict of interest i go well no why would it be conflict of interest not like i'm going to especially like and not like i can change the actuals or something like that like oh look i'm winning the draft i'm making a billion and twenty dollars because because uh the the last um twilight movie that didn't come out that's not that's already done right I'm but just, what are your thoughts serious. on this year's draft? I know that everybody says Tom Merritt's going to blow it out of the wall. Well, Team DTNS really is going to blow it out of the water. But I don't know. What do you think? The one thing I've learned about doing the draft and, and watching it and, and Hollywood is that anything can happen at any given point. I mean, you can look at CinemaScope. You can look at all the, the different kind of things that will give you as much data as you can. But there's always something that gets – that gets changed, that's something that just, I mean, obviously we know Avengers is going to make a boatload of cash. That's assumed, whatever. Right. It's the question, you know, the, the question always comes to me whenever it comes to any of the movies of the draft is, is that everyone will, will have these, like, pillar movies. He's like, these are going to make a, a ton of money. It, it's always a thing of, like, the ones that surprise me are the ones that you don't think are going to make enough money to, to conquer those pillars. Oh, right. Uh, where, where, because, like, you'll know, we know this is going to make a lot of money, but then are all these other lesser movies combined going to make more money? Right. Um, and, and, and that. And so, I mean, for me, it's just uh, the thing is, is that anything can happen. Uh, I, always, I always go in thinking one thing is going to happen. I always go in thinking one movie is going to dominate all of them. And usually I'm wrong. <laughs> uh, because uh, well, the, Hollywood, the, the American public will, uh, can completely and utterly switch on a dime as to whether or not they're tired of something. Right, and like I think this year we have we have another Happy Madison movie coming down the pipeline. Um, specifically, uh, we have Paul Bart Mall Cop too, right? This is the the year of, of that atrocious piece of junk. <clears throat> yes. But like, <laughs> you know, if it, but that being said, I mean, there are there are people that love that film. There are people that love that film and will pay money for that film. I'm not one of those people, but for there are people reason. out there. Yeah, you know, you take <laughs> Furious Seven. It's just recently just breaking records. And, and and just making more and more money. Well, and we know they can make money, but it's like, did we expect it to make that much money? Well, you not know, to be insensitive, think... but that's that's the death bounce. You know? Yeah. <laughs> and I'm sorry, but he, he died, and that brought a lot of, well, of I mean, for sure, publicity but, to the but, movie. But even then, there are people who are talking about the film on Buzz saying, this is the best Fast and Furious yet. Uh, and, and a lot of fans are digging the film, and... and the one thing that, that really helps the film a lot is, is you know, uh, word of mouth, buzz, things like that. Because even a guy like me who kind of likes Fast and Furious every so often mm. is considering seeing it. Oh, really? Um, yeah, I mean, I why not? Know. I mean, it looks, it looks silly. It looks over the top. And, I, you know, As if I can go in there with are. that kind of mindset, we're fine. Yeah. Um, is, is it like my, you know, or, or you know, so there's, there are movies coming down this summer that uh, it could just could completely go a different way. Um, like again, we know the ones that are going to make the most money, but it's a matter of like, okay, cool, that made the most money, but did it make enough money to counteract all the other things? And it, does it come out, you know, does it come out too late in the game to make enough money 
uh, for the time you know being. So yeah, I, I guess my thing is anything goes. I've, I've I've learned to just you know almost you know I've learned to accept that the draft will do what the draft does and that movies will do what they do and that what I'll think will make a lot of money sometimes will sometimes won't. Um, okay. And you almost have to kind of go a little bit on faith and 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 a little bit on because again I will hope. That a, you know a movie I may love I hope makes a lot of money but you know it will make a lot of money stateside. Yeah, no, I, I totally understand what you mean. But you know, along the same lines, um, if you could only see like one of the movies in this uh, this summer, what what movie would you go see? I mean, it should be pretty yes. easy, but there's a couple hard decisions. I mean, I want to see Avengers. I know. Um, uh, I don't know if it's on the draft because I, I, I forget what's coming down the pipeline for the draft off the top of my head. Um, but I know that because of uh, cinematography and because this is a Brant's movie that he wants to see, and he got me wise to the first one of it, and we watched it recently, uh, Pitch Perfect 2, I'm definitely kind of intrigued to see. Really? Yeah, Pitch Perfect, surprisingly, is a good movie. Uh, I know that sounds horrible, yeah. but I'm not even kidding you. It's surprisingly a good movie. I won't tease everything I like about it, but uh, the, if everything works out fine, there's an upcoming a uh, cinematography episode where we talk about it and, and it's surprisingly good. Okay. It's it's nope. <laughs> it's like it's this weirdly like you think because I know that mindset. I had that exact mindset yeah. and it's it's so funny that how 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 weird it, it was and got broken. Um but beyond that, I mean Avengers I'm definitely looking forward to um I, I forget what else is coming down. I mean there's so many things coming down. I have to look and see like it's oh yeah, that summer. looks cool. Yeah. Uh, like I, what about you? What are you looking for, Alex? Uh definitely Avengers um but if I had to go see one, because I could probably rent Avengers after the fact and be fine, which which I hate to say because I know it's going to be a big spectacle, you know, and everything. But it, I would probably be all right on my 40 inch TV at home with, you know, popcorn from the microwave instead. <laughs> you know? um, I think I would like to go see Ant-Man actually live. Um, yeah, live, but, you know, uh, I, think I that am would be interesting. really, really curious how that's going to work out. I, I and see that one is a gamble too because if they if they play it right if they do everything good it'll be a great movie because the character concept is good you just have to do it right otherwise it, it's dumb it's a, just a tiny guy you know? <laughs> well because like the last time that I ever doubted Marvel uh, and I never and I thought would not work was the first Thor film that was the first time I'd ever said this can't this this is going to be a hard sell. How are you going to put into this world where you've done your best of trying to ground it in some reality? Yeah. Maybe not in all reality, but in some reality, some type of like sciency thing. How are you going to introduce a God? Uh, and they did it and yeah, they did it well. Good. And so I'm, I'm, I, I, I don't think they can do wrong. Um, I don't know, I, you know. Wh I don't know if this is the, this. I, I forget what's coming down. I have to look again what's coming on summer because there's so there's so many movies. Oh, yeah. I just that I have to I have to study f for that. Like a lot of the times I do the mood draft minute, I really just care about the the values and and uh, the music part. Like for me, the hardest part about doing it is selecting the actual eight bit music. I know that sounds silly and dumb, <laughs> right. but it's truth. No, I get uh, it. To the yeah. point where this year I actually wrote a bit of a like drama script to it. Uh -huh. To get to a certain point of music, like I'm not even kidding you, it's silly. Nice, no, that's awesome. Yeah, well, the other one that I'm that I'm kind of that I'm actually worried for, but I would like to see this summer is um, um, Fantastic Four, because you know I want to see the superhero movies. Oh and God, I, I third that reboot, is, man. Th this is this is the problem I, I I see with Fantastic Four. Um, I like that Marvel was like, we're tired of you ruining this, so we're not going to give you any more material. Right, that doesn't matter. <laughs> That doesn't matter. Like none of that matters. Like I wish, I wish that would do something to you, but that does. That doesn't do shit. Um, because ultimately, the reason we're seeing any Hollywood, for, you know, Fantastic Four movie is, uh, is somebody there at the studio says, we have to make another one because our, if not, we lose our rights, and and we and we, we we can punt this year and make a boatload of cash next year. Or whatever, because I mean, ultimately, all they want is just to make a, a shit ton of money. That is, right. that is, any of your big Hollywood blockbuster. I mean, there's some great ones that come out. Don't get me wrong. Like I love, I love me some some some. You know, I love me Guardians of the Galaxies. I love me you oh, know yeah. some of your your bigger blockbuster films. But all a studio cares about at this point, especially like a Sony and especially like a Fox, those kind of guys, all they care about is making a boatload of cash if they can, and right. and they're gonna hopefully make a boatload of cash 
but they know that it, that I, I think that they will still make it because there's enough people that that want to hope to God that a Fantastic Four movie works, and I just don't think it's going to. You don't think it's going to? I see. I think it could work. I mean, it's gonna make money. It's probably gonna make its budget. It's probably gonna do well, and it's probably gonna look great. I just, I don't think it's gonna, it's going to do as well as they hope. Yeah. Well, I mean, look at how many times they've screwed up Spider Man. Like, if they, <laughs> can't even, yeah. Uh, I don't know. I if, mean, I, I, I mean, thankfully, uh, okay, because Fox owns Fantastic Four, right? I think is it Fox that owns the rights to it, or is it Sony? I, I think so, but that that whole situation is so convoluted with between. Because I know Sony. Them. I mean, because I, I know Sony recently wised up and realized, oh wait, you mean to tell me that if we just get like ten points on, uh, you know, twenty points on on this little film called uh, Spider Man, if we let Marvel do it, we'll still make a a a, a ton 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 of money. Right. Yeah, sure, why not? And they take the the monetary risk even better. <laughs> even <laughs> you know. Better. Even better. They'll tell, let them let them figure it out. Right. Oh, they figured it out. Cool. And we still made money without doing any work. <laughs> like I'm glad Sony realized that cuz it's the one thing that I wish a lot of the other guys that own Marvel stuff would kind of realize of like if we just accept the fact that they'll make a a way more money better if we just accept the fact that we could make 30% of a shit ton of money, <laughs> that's better than making 100% of not a shit ton of money. Right. No, I totally if, 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 they, if they would just think like that, we would see a lot more of these Marvel properties come back. Because ultimately, it really truly is just how much of that pie do we get if we let you do this. Right. That's all it is. Well, you know, continuing on the movie topic, um, what's your favorite movie to watch at any time, to rewatch? You know, like if, if you just... Come home and, and got to pop in a movie. What what movie is that? So, ultimately, it's uh, Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas. That's a good uh, answer. Out of all <laughs> out of all the strange things I've uh, that I've collected, you might think, oh, it's probably some you know, other weird thing, but no, it's Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas because there are people I wish I could write prose like. Mm. There are people I would kill to write prose like. There are there are, are are weird things that I I wish I could achieve as a writer, and writing like Hunter S. Thompson's one of them. Oh yeah, um, oh. that man was a goddamn genius, yeah. uh, and 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 fuck if he could write. And there are some prose in that book alone that are that are amazing. But the movie itself. It's one of my favorite Johnny Depp films. It's one of my uh, all-time favorite movies now. It's something that I will put uh, that I have put on in loop just to keep me in mind. It's between that and Wreck It Ralph, and that tells you what kind of person I am as to like what movies I keep on loop and, and constantly <laughs> on my iPad. Uh, but yeah, at any given time, it's like shit. I just need to center myself. Uh, Okay, fair loathing it is, and it's just you know it's 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 the giant ride to the you know, the fucking you know the the red uh, what was it the um the, the I had to look at the the car's name I forgot they called them, but oh, just yeah. uh you know I love that film. Yeah, no, it's it's a it's a great movie. I've I've watched it a bunch of times. It's it's just it's I, fun. I could watch it right now and ridiculous. I, I could and, watch yeah. it right now. I I could I could quote it right now. Just just you're not Portuguese, man. Um, <laughs> I, I fucking I, I adore that film. I love that end monologue. I love that that like, you know, obscurity. You know, just another freak in the freak kingdom. Like I I have I have played that movie just at times when I probably shouldn't be watching that movie. Uh, <laughs> just, you know, I, I have played that movie just for the audio at times and oh, yeah. and, and just heard just like the, the crazed fever pitch dream that comes out of that. I mean, it's it's if you have not watched Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas yet. Uh, go watch it. One because it's done by one of my favorite directors, Terry Gilliam, uh, who I adore and love. And, and obviously, if you're familiar with Monty Python, that name shouldn't uh, come as a surprise. Right. But two, it's like this came out of Terry Gilliam. God damn! <laughs> why don't why, why why don't we see more Terry Gilliam movies? Oh right, that's right. Because Las La Mancha never got made. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, they can. Everybody can find you on Twitter at Vincent404, right? And uh, mm -hmm. the website is uh, CosmicRadio.tv, if I'm not mistaken. Correct, Amundo. Okay. That's pretty much where everything I do is at in the world. All right. Awesome. Well, thanks for joining me, Roberto. Is there anything else that you'd like to share or talk about? 
No, but there's one thing I do want to mention. I see that that timer here because I know you guys don't see OBS, but I see OBS. And there was one thing that uh, Alex had said at the beginning of the show to me. I said, oh, we got this hard out of, of, of like a certain time. Like, you know, to, he goes, look, if I've been going for an hour, something's gone horribly wrong. <laughs> yeah. We are but eight minutes away from him recording live uh, for about an hour. So so let's let's see if we can we can figure out something to talk about for eight minutes. <laughs> it's just nothing more than to rank up being the longest uh, Diamond Dialogue episode. Episode, I hope. You're, you're if not, close. then we'll, we'll figure this out. You're pretty close, but a good mm, ten minutes of that is, or so are our pre-show at least. So. Well, look, it's forty minutes. That's like we're, we're almost there. If we if we can just push forward, let's see. Uh, I'll I'll ask you, Alex. What video game are you looking forward to the most? Well, you don't get to interview me. <laughs> I, was, well, I, I to, look, I'm asking you what game you're looking forward to most because, like, if we have to, if you have to, I'll force we talk about the new Deus Ex game for about an hour. <laughs> Uh, video game I'm looking forward to the most, honestly, it's not even announced yet, is uh, next Diablo expansion. Oh, that's right. That's coming down the pipeline. Shit, I They're, forget. They haven't even announced a name or what's going on with it, but I know it's going to be good, and I know I'm going to buy it. And, you know, it's going to be awesome. See, for me, the, the game that's been announced it's coming out i'm definitely looking for the new deus ex game uh, because i love that franchise uh to death i've been playing that since the uh early pc days oh sure um uh, back in the, the first game so I've, I've this is not even you know the first time i played it um i hope the new final fantasy is good i hope i hope and pray uh because even though all the lightning games were kind of crazy. I still love the soundtrack, and I still I still enjoyed the music a lot more than a lot of people did. Um, beyond that, I mean, everything else is uh, you know just like Life is Strange and and some of the other kind of games coming out. Like, I, really, I'm I'm waiting a lot of Kickstarter games that I kicked into, like Abduction, My Number Nine, um, You Are Not the Hero, those sort of things is oh, is, sure. is really where a lot of my like waiting for uh, on gaming beyond your your big AAA titles. Um, I just asked that because I figured that that could get us a few few more minutes. And and then looking at the time, look at the timer. We've we've gone at least two or three minutes. We only got six minutes to fill. How have you filled? What is the best way that you've ever filled time? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. I don't, I'm not. Gonna, no, see, you, I don't answer these. I don't answer questions. I don't. I'm bad on this side of the camera. <laughs> well, look, 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 now, now tables have turned. You, I know. You're now, you're now competing against other podcaster Roberto Villegas. I, see, I haven't been doing the show long enough for that. One, one of these times, it's going to have to be me being, being interviewed, but I haven't done the show that's, long that's, enough to, to get there. <laughs> you, uh, okay, here's, here's a, a word diatribe. Did you ever see the, uh, Chapp- um, the um, behind the actor studio where Dave Chappelle interviewed um, What's-His-Face, the actual guy that hosts the show? Oh, uh... Shoot, I can't remember what his name is. But you know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, gosh, it's right there, too. I forget his name. I, I forget his name. But there's actually an episode uh, of – and you can watch it on YouTube if you find it because it's, it's there. Well, it was like right after like Dave Chappelle got, was on the, the uh, Behind the Actor Studio, and it was a great – that was a great episode in general. Um, but apparently he became like really good friends with the guy <laughs> to the point when it came to like the – uh, all right, we're going to interview you, man. Who do you want to have do it? It was Dave Chappelle, and it's like one of the cooler interviews because it's 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 Dave Chappelle be, doing his best sort of um, homage to oh, that guy. Like, not in a bad way. James Lipton. Like a, James Lipton. Thank yes. you, James Lipton. Thanks, Mac. Uh, yeah, he's doing <laughs> his best James Lipton impression. Like, not impression, but homage. And it's such a, it's such a great show because James Lipton actually is like a, a, a cool guy. Yeah. Um, and stuff. Um, let's see, we've, 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 we've only got four more minutes to fill. Uh, here's the last question I'm going to ask you, Alex. Okay. Because obviously you're a podcaster and you listen to podcasts. What is your favorite underrated podcast? Like the podcast that no one seems to talk about that you love nonetheless. Hmm. I'm not sure. Let me double check my list here because... I have to figure out which one is the. <laughs> let me it's let long. check my. Let me check my O O P L M. <laughs> let me see what's on the feed, because uh, no. I know mine. Um. Well, I, see, I listen to a lot of them, and some of them don't always come out often. They're they're very uh, very like um, sparse when when they come out. Um. So let me see what's on my subscriptions list here. Um. 
Oh, there's a lot of good ones. Well, just say one. Well, see, Harmontown gets talked about a lot, so I can't say that yep. one. Jenny's getting a lot of coverage with her Tell It Anyway podcast. She's doing great there. Um, yep. You know what doesn't get talked about often enough that I really, really love? This Week in Science. Okay, it so just, that's a good one. Yeah, I, I, it just I, doesn't, I, doesn't get mentioned as often as it should. And and it's it's a, an awesome show, and it's been around longer than any of the other This Week in Anything shows. It's it's yep. like the original. <laughs> <laughs> even though even though uh, Leo would like to say his was the original. Yeah, whatever. Shut up, Leo. But, I know. <laughs> but no, Dr. Kiki's awesome. Um, you know, Blair's hilarious. I, I, I love... Uh, uh, what's the other guy? Uh, oh, my God. The guy I, on there. Jason. Uh, no, wait. Shit. I, I forget who's on, on that show. But, yeah, I can't remember uh, his name now. <laughs> uh, just so I feel like you've, that, that the tables have been turned. For me, uh, it, it gets talked about in a certain crowd, and a lot of people watch it and consume it. Uh, but it's for me, it's either the Shut Up and Sit Down podcast, sort of this uh, board game podcast out of the UK, hmm. or uh, and even though it technically is a Smodcast podcast, it's one of the ones that you almost have to be in the know to like. Uh, Four Eyes and Beard, uh, Feeb, uh, okay. I also like because that also gets really updated too. Um, but yeah, I would say probably Shut Up and Sit Down. It's actually just really um, if you've never been to Shut Up and Sit Down dot com, it's it's such a great way. Of, of reviewing board games and if, like for me that's what got me to like buy half the board games i own no oh, sure um well because like they're the kind of guys that if they don't like something even if it's like the they they keep the, the kicker podcast they will or the kicker game they will ignore like they like they have a thing against flux that i understand why they have a thing against flux oh, okay. um, and, and such uh, but yeah, no. Shut up and sit down is is, is probably the, the podcast I look forward to the most to hear on my feed when it gets updated. Because beyond that, it would be something like uh, a usual big podcast, like Rishi's podcast or the Patch, or mm. or something along those lines. I just I just look forward to hearing. But yes, it would have to be um, uh, shut up and sit down for oh, sure. And, we have we're, we're almost there. Oh yeah, we, we, we're almost there. We've and got the Diablo seconds. show. If you're a Diablo fan. Listen to Scott Johnson's Diablo show. It's the best Diablo podcast out there. Like, really, he's great. I... <laughs> All right. We, 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 okay. Three, two, one. Yeah, right, we've we hit an we hour. Your goal. <laughs> right. We have broken the show. All right. Well, you can watch more of these interviews at tinvec.com slash DD. I promise they're not all as long as this one. <laughs> but I had a lot of fun, Roberto. Uh, thanks for joining me. And uh, if you want to um, subscribe, you can go to the website there. There's RSS and iTunes subscriptions link, subscription links there as well. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs> <laughs>